Sustainability is a central component to many smart city strategies. And this is certainly the case in the city of Orlando. My next guest today is an eco-entrepreneur, urban farmer, and a sustainability professional who develops partnerships, policies, and programs. He does this all while being the senior advisor to Orlando's mayor, Buddy Dyer. Please welcome Chris Castro, Director of Sustainability at the City of Orlando. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. So Chris, let's begin by talking about how do you define smart cities? Because I think that's what's really interesting. I would like to hear you define it for the city of Orlando. Sure. First, I'd, I'd like to talk about a little bit of the unique challenges that Orlando faces. And, and some of my colleagues will, will mention this throughout the interview. But Orlando is the fastest growing region in the entire country. Out of the top 30 MSAs, we are rising uh, year over year. And in addition, we've had 68 million visitors come to our city last year alone. So we face some really unique challenges from a long-term sustainability standpoint. And as a result, our mayor, Buddy Dyer, launched an effort 10 years ago called Greenworks Orlando. And the whole effort was, as we continue to grow as a globally competitive city in the 21st century, how can we ensure that we are enhancing quality of life and the health and well-being for those who live here? How do we drive a robust and a diverse economy? And of course, find ways to protect natural resources and the environment for current and future generations. And, and so when we start to look at smart cities, it's really this nexus between sustainability and what we've been doing the last decade and the onset of incorporating advanced technologies that can make our city more intelligent, more interconnected and more efficient as a, as a community. And when you look at that, what has made you look at the city of Orlando unique compared to those other cities when you think about them out there right now? Because there are a lot sure. of cities who are trying to look at themselves to be smart and they want to be innovative and look at technology. Some of them have succeeded, some have struggled and found that they've made some huge investments and they've not gone over very well. But it seems like you guys are sure. finding your, your way, you're finding your groove and making some of this work. And, and maybe it's because you have, you have a captain at the helm who really, you know, is saying we, we get it not, and he's leading the charge and you're all following his, his, his say in all of this, maybe. You tell me. I will say certainly Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer has been the tip of the spear behind this whole effort and realizing that we need to continue to put Orlando on the map as a competitive city. But it's also the culture. We have a really strong culture of creativity and innovation and technology in the city of Orlando. We're the world's leader of modeling and simulation. Uh, we have a robust uh, community engagement around uh, technology and engaging our residents and students in this. And of course, we're the home of the experience experimental prototype community of tomorrow, also known as Epcot, right, that was developed here in the 1980s. So one thing we're seeing is that the culture is very much embracing. And what our role in the city has been is how can we enhance city services to, to really embrace technology and sustainability and make it part of the DNA of our city moving forward. So looking at things like public safety and transportation, built environment, energy and utilities, water resources, waste management, and even the digital landscape, right? Telecommunications that allows the interconnectedness of, of all of these different systems. Talk about the built environment. So when we talk about construction, because that's important, because I think when we talk about the future and landscapes of things, that becomes so important because you can't have all these connected things without first building it. And I think we get lost in that when we talk about infrastructure, we talk about all these sensors, you have to build them first. You've got to put them into the roads to make all these connected autonomous cars. And I think the street lights and that, and I think sometimes we don't really sure. fully talk about that enough without really talking about what a built environment really means in some ways and designing it and building it and bringing it all to fruition. So the construction industry is such a, a critical part of realizing a smart city for, for really any community. And it's really about, um, you know, essentially laying down the infrastructure that's needed for us to be smart. Uh, we often talk about the fiber that's laid that allows for the intelligent transportation system and our dynamic signals for us to have efficient transportation. We also utilize that, that same type of fiber uh, and infrastructure for citywide surveillance and ensuring public safety and predictive analysis. Um, and then down to the actual buildings, these facilities that make up the built environment, 
you know, house us every single day, right? They li we live and we work indoors in these facilities more than 80, sometimes 90% of our entire days. And so um, what, they're, what these facilities are becoming are these beacons for these technologies. The true internet of things is essentially the buildings being the main anchor for these where the fiber is connected, where we have various different sensors from building automation and controls to smart lighting to HVAC um, and, and a number of other technologies that can make our buildings more efficient uh, at the end of the day. Do you think perhaps maybe we got lost in what the Internet of Things are because we talk about so many little things in our lives being connected? We don't realize mm -hmm. the importance of how dramatic the Internet of Things are to so many other things in our lives that are much bigger than what our smartphone is uh, connecting an app to just like, you know, saying, oh boy, you know, how much weight can I lose today? Or, you know, these little things or, sure. whoa, you know, Bobby and Sue have a really fun device that they're playing with at home. I mean, there's so many more things yeah. or we talk about Alexa and I get that, but Alexa's bringing sure. to a lot of AI, but there's much bigger things that I think that are behind all this internet of things that we talk about. Yeah, and, and I often envision all of those various things connected by this digital landscape to allow for us to create connectivity, right? And so it's not an individual technology. IoT is about the, the vast majority, you know, the, the aggregation of all of these individual nodes and sensor points that are capturing data in real time that are communicating that data across the landscape for us to analyze it through analytics and computer modeling, and then take that information and become more intelligent as a city. And, and you know, for us, it's really about you know, improving the efficiency of a city that minimizes on expenses that taxpayers have to operate our city, to make ourselves more, uh, you know, efficient and welcoming to business and to those who want to live, work, learn, and play here. What about this, you know, the big thing that we talk about is incentivizing our next generation to understand the importance of what construction can bring because we're now mm -hmm. going to have a shortfall of workers to understand construction. So it might be great we have this internet of things or this built environment, but if we don't understand and help them understand, they have to be the next creators of this innovation or we're not going to be able to build anything because we don't have the workers, just like we had the shortage of manufacturers. We're gonna have a shortfall mm -hmm. here. How do we get that generation to understand we need their creativity to be able to build these things that you're talking about in this smart world, in this connected transportation, in this sustainability? None of this is going to matter if we can't get the workers to wanna to want to be in construction to put all these things together, to be you're in your city. Right. And it it, it even starts as as early as early childhood education and K through 12. Right. And here in the city of Orlando, our, our public school system, Orange County Public Schools, has instituted a goal to go completely digital by 2020. So imagine every single classroom, every student now embracing digital technologies, getting more uh, affluent with using computers and using the internet and using emails, and then evolve into higher education where I've personally been working on creating uh, new types of associates of science degrees and new types of certifications that are really focused on technical and vocational training. So one example with Valencia College is, is a degree called Energy Management and Controls Technology. And it's really focused on the construction industry in the built environment and equipping current and future generations to better understand how to use uh, control, sophisticated controls and the emergence of all of these technologies within the built environment, including fire safety, safety systems, security systems, you know, obviously the energy and water efficiency systems as well. Um, and, and lastly, I'll mention is we've been engaging uh, students in some smart city hackathons. We've really day period over the course of a weekend, we're bringing together people, uh, students of, of all walks, all different disciplines. We're giving them a challenge based on what the city has encountered, and we're encouraging them to come up with new and innovative technological solutions that can support us in achieving those goals and addressing those challenges. And we've had such great success with that type of engagement. Just wrapping up, just to give us some idea, Chris, where do you see the city of Orlando as a smart city going forward? How do you see it in the next few years, next five years? Give, it, give us a, put us in that landscape, if you will. 
Yeah, we, we currently have incredible momentum as it relates to our smart cities and sustainability initiatives. And I think that Orlando is positioning ourselves to truly live up to that name of being the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. We're, we're essentially positioning ourselves to, to embrace the eyeballs who come here to Orlando to test out new types of technologies in a wide variety of different sectors and work with partners to really in, embrace um, you know, the, the revolution that we're in, attracting business development in, in a wide variety of areas, including autonomous and connected vehicles. That's one area that we're really beginning to excel in. And, and we've recently been designated as a proving ground test bed for these types of vehicles. And, and also in the renewable energy space, we're, we're beginning to accelerate rapidly uh, thanks to the work that we and, and our partners at OUC are doing, the Orlando Utilities Commission, to get us to 100% renewables for, for city operations by 2030 and 100% renewables citywide by mid-century. Um, so, so there's a really a very exciting momentum that's happening here in Orlando, and the culture is really starting to, to embrace the idea of being kind of that future 21st century competitive city that, you know, that, that really is um, you know, focused on technology and sustainability at the core. Well, I have to tell you, Chris, it's very exciting to hear all the things we've done, we've, we've heard today from the city of Orlando. So I want to thank you, Chris Castro, the director of sustainability at the city of Orlando. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peggy. Pleasure. All right. Well, that's someone you should know. And there you have it. There's so much exciting things going on at the city of Orlando.